Welcome to Build. I'm Sam Thompson, and we are live from London in our very new studio. I've never been here before, but I'm so excited. And on that very sofa, we will be joined by actors, musicians, artists, TV stars. Actually, talking of TV stars, we are joined here today by the writer and cast of ITV's show Cleaning Up, which got six million viewers on its opening night. Please put your hands together for Mark Marlowe, Jada Nuka, Ben Bailey Smith, and Robert Ems. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to The Sofa and our new studio. How are you today? Very nice. Very good, thank you. Yeah, very, very nice. And for anyone who would like to get involved, if you're watching this at home, all you have to do is tweet us at Build Series LDN, or if you're watching this on Facebook Live, just leave a comment below. Now, episode one was amazing, I'm going to be honest. It's, I, I'm hooked, just to let you know. Uh, for six million viewers on the opening of that, it must feel amazing. For something you worked so hard on, to be so well received. Definitely. I mean, you, you don't have a figure in head of what you imagine it's going to get. You just hope for the best. And to hear that it got six million was incredible. And how do you guys feel? You must feel amazing. It's kind of crazy to think that many people uh, are watching you do, you know, watching you act. So brilliant. Yeah, amazing. Hopefully it keeps up. I, I really think <laughs> it will. And uh, Mark, for people who have been living under a rock and haven't seen episode one, Catch us up. Bring us up to speed. What's going on? Okay, episode one, you get introduced to Sam, our star, um, played by Sheridan Smith. And uh, she's a mother, a single mother, struggling with a gambling problem. And uh, she's got thousands and thousands of pounds of debt. She's going to lose uh, custody of her girls. Um, and she desperately needs some money to um, solve her problems. And she just happens to hear um, a little nugget of information at the... Uh, office where she works on Canary Wharf and it's basically she realizes she's working for an insider trader and if she can get further information by bugging his office it could be the answer to her problems. It's the answer to all our problems. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, why has no one done this before? <laughs> it's highly illegal, we should not be doing it. <laughs> it is illegal, isn't it? It is illegal, yes. We still love her though, that's the thing, she's such a lovable character as well as you know, clearly doing something so illegal. <laughs> now yeah, Jay. also she's she's a she's a victim in some ways of her addiction too, because you know, it's, it it shouldn't be lost on us that she's she is addicted to gambling. You know, and we see that constantly with the constant spin she's doing on her little apps and whatnot. So it's kind of in her nature to 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 gamble at whatever level and 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 think about the uh, consequences later. Which you know, like you say, is is wrong. But she is a she is an addict, so she's a victim first. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah. And uh, Jade, you play Jess, who is a co-worker of Sam, and also works in the family's cafe. Can you tell us a little bit more about your character? Uh, yeah, well, uh, Jess and Sam um, have been sort of best friends for ages. Uh, she works in her family cafe, and to make a bit of extra money, she started working in the cleaning company with with Sam. Um, she's got her own problems. The cafe rent, the rent on the cafe has gone up, and so they they might have to sell. So she's got to find some other way to to make money and also keep the family business alive, which is sort of how um, Sam manages to kind of get her involved. We actually are lucky enough to have a sneak peek of tonight's episode. It's a little clip of you and your co-worker Sam in action. Wow. I can't wait. I, I genuinely can't wait for episode two. I'm a super fan already, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> now, you've had a flutter. Okay, just a flutter so far, but it looks like Sam is pushing you slightly more into the game. Can you tell us a little bit more about the dynamic of your relationship? Yeah, well, um, clearly Sam is quite persuasive. And I think the thing is with Sam and Jess that they, they're such close friends that there's a massive amount of trust there. And so... You know, even though Jess, my character, is much more probably level-headed, um, likes to try and get Sam to kind of think before she jumps into something and kind of assess the situation um, before just jumping in. You know, Jess isn't a gambler. Jess also doesn't think that Sam is still gambling. She thinks that that's in the past and that she's and that she's got out of that. 
And so, yeah, the dynamic is definitely Sam has to try and persuade, but she knows how to do it because, you know, they've been, you know, they know each other so well. She knows Jess. She knows how to, you know, she knows how to make her say yes. I, I'm sensing ominous tones, though. I feel like it can only go one way. <laughs> That's what frightens me because I love both your characters so much. Now, Ben, you play, you play Blake. I don't love your character as much. No, he's a, you. You, he's you a have, bad guy. He's you a bad have guy. friction with, with Jess. And uh, I, just, I have to ask you, does your character become any more likable as the series goes on? Mm. <laughs> I mean... Ultimately, there has to be, in, in a story like this, there has to be some villains. So one, one thing I would say about Blake, I suppose, that is uh, halfway positive is that he's, uh, he's part of, you know, something bigger. And Getting he's, blackmailed. He's not, you know, if you, it's clear from those early phone calls in, in the first episode that he's not necessarily some evil overlord. Um, he's got a, a wife and a kid and um, he's under pressure. And, you know, like he says in the first episode, um, we've always done small amounts, you know, rarely. Now now you're talking about doing big amounts regularly. That's that's a risk. So he understands that there is a risk there and he under he's, he's very conscious of the fact that he he's the one who could lose everything. So... I don't want to go as far as saying he's got like a huge conscience and whatnot, but he is aware of the consequences. So maybe you could feel a little sorry for him. And at that's the end of the day, more stressed as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. End of the day, he's an insider trader, and um, yeah, they're not great people, are they? Let's be honest. Do you know who's a great person? You, Robert. <laughs> yes. <very laughs> You're much. a great person. Now you play Glenn. Is it Glenn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glenn. I play Glenn. Yeah. And you're yeah. a PhD student who's li living yeah. with Sam, uh, albeit Sam's semi-reluctant. How do you get drawn into this whole shenanigans going on here? Because you're so innocent right now. Yeah, I think, and it, I mean, he remains so sort of, you know, for, for, for this next episode, he, he start, starts to kind of get closer to the family and, and Sam begins to sort of lean on him a little bit more. But he sort of still is in the dark about it, really. But, but the longer he stays in the dark about it and the closer he gets to the family, the kind of the, the sort of bigger the hole she digs there as well. So... So yeah, I think I think that's the kind of this episode is is where you know she begins to sort of dig a deeper hole for herself, really, which ultimately is just going to potentially end in disaster or not. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't remember how it ends. Anyway. <laughs> I'm so excited to see it myself. So I can <laughs> it's all good, dude, because you got four lawnmowers in the sheds. Exactly. Yeah. So that's fine. You can he's fix fine. Them. I mean, he's in his own little kind of world, Glyn. He's like. I'm, I'm hoping for a spin-off series, Mark. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch it. I'm not even joking. I love you. Not, not like that. I mean, I, I like you. <laughs> We've uh, just met. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, that's me. I come on strong. I'm a Sam as well. Do you know, I like a flutter. Okay. <laughs> now, Mark, this is your first ever drama, if I'm not mistaken. What an amazing opportunity. How did it come about? Um, well, I've been trying to be a writer for like 10 years, I think I'd say, and um, I'd had some near misses with some other ideas. But um, when, that, when I had this idea, I thought, this is quite strong. I feel like people would relate to this, and I got a chance. Um, it has a chance. But um, at, by that point, I was fortunately good friends with a, a director called Lewis Arnold, and um, he had the right contacts that I mm. didn't. Um, and he put it in front of a very powerful producer, um, Jane Featherstone, and... Uh, it was basically through her clout and um, experience that um, people were willing to take a chance on me. Because I think, yeah, I was definitely the big risk for everyone. Like, well, it's paid off, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone, I think everyone loved the idea, and everyone, um, everyone, everyone, Jane has track record is like second to none. But I think, you know, if it wasn't for Jane vouching for me, I, I wouldn't be here now, basically. So, yeah, I have a lot to thank for her, to her for. And you have Sheridan Smith. I know. Can't lying it. What an amazing actress. Did you have any involvement in the casting? Um, I was consulted and my opinion was listened to. Um, but, you know, I, the, I, uh, Lewis basically took the reins on that uh, as long, uh, 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 with the other producers. Um, but uh, Sheridan's name came up like pretty much straight away. For, in, in the meeting, the green light meeting with ITV, that was the first name that came out. They said, we're thinking of Sheridan. What do you guys think? And it was like, well, yeah, she'd be amazing. Um, we didn't know whether she'd want to do it or not. And 
um, much to my surprise, she, she read it really quickly, if I remember, and we think we heard about like, the next day or two days later, and it was suddenly... I wasn't just writing anymore. I was writing knowing that Sheridan was going to play the character. Does that help? If you know, if you have them in your mind now, does that kind of help you sort of formulate it a little bit more? Uh, it did, in it, it did, it, it did insofar as I knew how great an actress she was and also I knew that she could do drama really well and I knew that she had also had comedic sensibilities that were great. So I knew that she'd be able to do, do that balance. But I, and I also knew she was very likeable and lovable so I could make her do, have her doing bad things at times and audience would be willing to go with her more. Uh, but the other, the, I think the downside was, it was Sheridan Smith, and I was thinking, um, uh, she's such an amazing actress, was, and has done such great roles, um, I need to match up, live up to that standard. So, yeah, that was a bit of pressure, I knew. Do you know what I thought was really interesting, is how you've, um, you've made her so multi-layered. As you were saying, she's an addict, uh, of, of the gambling sense, and, but she still remains lovable. And then she's doing something illegal, but she's trying to take care of her two kids. And it's just that up and down roller coaster, isn't it? And, and I, I find that so fascinating about her. She's, uh, she's definitely a character that's going to be divisive. People, people will love her and some people will, I think, not love her at all because she is at times doing things that aren't particularly heroic or likeable. But I've always thought as long as uh, I'm, she's, everything she's doing is for a good reason, her heart's in the right place, she makes mistakes and and um but she then also tries to solve them so as long as i, I think as long as we know that people sh i think will like her and go with her well she's a human being isn't she which i think is is relatable to all of us you know we're not all perfect and and we all have flaws but as you say she tries to correct them mm. and i really i, I find that person really really what's um what's she like to work with by the way is she amazing she's, yeah great i really enjoyed working with her yeah me too we had we had yeah. great fun on set yeah She's I was just going to say about about the, her character though. It, it is interesting. The, the, the kind of the the worse the decisions that she makes are, the more kind of interesting the story becomes, and the more we follow her really. So it's kind of she's so flawed, she's so lovable, and she's making such bad decisions, and that just creates such like great drama. So no, no human being is just one thing, and I think that's what a lot of audiences find frustrating. I know I'm I'm one of them. I f find it frustrating when I watch something and there's an evil guy who's just evil and a good person who's just good. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense on, on any level. And I think Mark portrays that really well in his, his writing for Sheridan. And what we know about Sheridan herself is just, it's a, perf it's a perfect role for her. I'm not saying she's a gambling addict, but, you know, Sheridan's a complex person. You know, she, and she's a really interesting person and she wears her heart on her sleeve, I think. And you see that passion... Uh, put into this character as well, which makes her just so watchable. I mean, she's always watchable. In terms of working with her, she's a lot of fun. She reminds me a little bit of when I used to work with Bradley Walsh. You know, the set's always super quiet and a little bit more boring when they're not there. You notice it. You it's know? like when I'm not here, isn't it, guys? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> no, that was muted. That was <laughs> muted at best. Please. You guys are actually getting a lot of love on the socials, by the way. Just going to let you know that. We've got a question from Jay on Twitter who says, obviously Sam's got some bad habits. What are your biggest vices, guys? And we're going to go from right to left. <laughs> Start with us. It's a family show, right? Be whatever <laughs> show you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. Biggest vices? Uh, laziness, probably. Um, takes me a long time to get motivated in the morning. <laughs> Unless I've got a deadline coming, I feel like I can't really get going. Fair play. We, I think we can all... We can all relate to that. Now go on, Jade. Uh, chips and coffee. <laughs> Not at the chips same time. <laughs> Dipped in. <laughs> yeah. No, oh God, no. But like any time, like if somebody offers me a coffee, I'm pretty much like, yeah, I could have a coffee now. Jesus, if you are asking for chips, yeah. I can relate to that too, but more in the pepperoni and raw mushroom way. I'm not joking. I, I know, I, I know, I understand. Sorry, what? I know, but just try it, okay? <laughs> I'm doing Veganuary at the moment, so I'm actually not doing pepperoni and mushrooms, but you should try it. I'm sorry, I've just completely stolen the spotlight. <laughs> on to you, Ben. Uh, oh, man. Um, definitely procrastinating. No question about it. it drives me, dr I drive myself up the wall not getting stuff done. Biting my nails, which I cannot believe as a grown man, I still do. 
Um, I was I would say drinking, but I'm British, so I think it's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, that's it. Mine are exactly the same as yours, actually. Maybe we should hang out more and like you know, help each other out. I I bite my nails all the time, which is it's terrible, and um, procrastinating, yeah, and completely about that. <laughs> and uh, Mark, this was. Uh, Inspired slightly by Wall Street, was it not? Yes, the original 87 Gordon Gecko version. Um, yeah, the, I was watching the film, it must have been about four years ago now, and um, I, there was a scene where Charlie Sheen was trying to get some inside information, and I just noticed in the background there were some cleaners, and I just thought, well, oh, if they're in the office with inside information, why can't they, why can't they do that? And that was, that was basically where the idea came from. Uh, and uh, it's it's so relatable, isn't it? Sort of, you know, uh, a struggling mother of two who is just working to, to make the best life for, for herself and her family. And what was it like to sort of act in this kind of series where it's very modern? Was it with modern themes? And may I just say, dark, you know, dark themes, but made lighthearted almost. I found it quite appealing the the idea of you know the invisible workforce and and cleaners doing something that they wouldn't get found out for because nobody notices them, and also exploring themes of zero zero hour contracts and yeah quite current themes. I thought that was that was quite a draw really. Yeah. Mm. To for me, it was the the addiction element. I thought it was about time there was something said about it in some way. You know because um, I I'd I'd been quite outspoken maybe a year before about um the sort of love affair between football and gambling you know I'm a big big football fan but I, I don't really agree with the shirts having gambling logos on them and all the the bet in play stuff I just think it encourages addiction basically and you and know they do that silly thing at the end they go if uh, when the fun stops stop yeah you bet it's like no one listens but no no, no one is an addict for fun yeah. you know you're an addict because you're an ad you're, you're addicted. You can't stop. You feel compelled, right? You don't do it for fun. So when the fun stops, stops. Is it, when the fun stops, stop is is kind of meaningless. Um, so I just thought it's a great way. And like you say, it's it's not all doom and gloom. It's quite a light-hearted series. It's a it's a nice easy way in. I think for people to think about big issues. And that's that's the thing that attracted me. I was going to say just about um, people living. So hand to mouth and how so many people can relate to that. So I mean, it's so recognisable, the characters, you know, you're working, you know, working so hard and maybe not having any money left over at the end of the week. And I think so many people know that and seeing that on, seeing themselves, seeing the people they know on screen like that is, is in a good way, I think, is good. And, and how important was it to uh, not overbear people with the heavy themes? Because obviously, you know, in the current climate, everyone's almost a bit bored of, of you know, watching sort of depressing things to do to do with bankers and economy and all those. But you've managed to lighten it up, though, so so well and so subtly. Well, that, that was important. It's, that's kind of my style of writing, I'd say. I've always looked to, to tell dramatic stories, but they have a lightness of touch. And I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do with this. And I'm, I'm happy that people say that that's what it feels like. It it it, it, t it tackles dramatic, weighty themes, but it, it also is enjoyable and entertaining and fun at times. But so, yeah, that was important to me. I think also, also, you know, it's about the characters who aren't people who are going around doom and gloom in their lives, because I don't think people really do that. You know, you just have the life you have and you live the life you have so if you're living hand to mouth you don't get up every day and be miserable though. be be miserable you know people do generally human beings do kind of find the bright side of life so it, it's kind of real in that sense it's not i don't think it was a device just just because you know we we need to make this palatable i think it's just a way of exploring the real side of humanity as well no yeah robert's right that's when i when, when i've written anything i've always thought Real life is kind of light, light and shade. It's even if the, the worst thing imaginable is happening, people will still find humour in their life. And I've always thought the best dramas kind of reflect that. Absolutely. And now talking about humour, have you guys had any chance to sort of like have any jokes off camera? Have you guys do you hang out at all or? No, no, you hate each other. <laughs> they hate each other. Everybody. <laughs> we really hate each other. No, <laughs> we do, we don't. We don't really. On the whole, the three of us have 
many scenes together. I mean, I, I have Yeah, we've only just met today, actually. So yeah. we're, 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 <laughs> no we're way! Just I just met Robert this morning. Yeah. First so. impressions. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that, you know. Uh, and then me and Jade cross paths in a couple of scenes, but um, not much. So uh, the, the weird thing about a, a film set is that people can be at work at completely different times. I mean, I'd already, a lot of interviews I've done for this, just people are saying, that's your second time working with Sheridan. I was like, is it? I was like, oh yeah, yeah, we did. We did a thing, we did a thing like the year before. Uh, but we weren't in any of the same scenes, you know, and we were on set at completely different times. So we literally never, never met. Um, and that, that happens more than you might think. And there are sort of different factions in that respect. So if, if my first day is three or four weeks after they've started shooting, then you, you come in just like coming in late to a, a school. You can see the friendships have already built. And you've got to sort of be like, hello, hello. <laughs> that was my 15, no, it's 17 years of school, right, right there. Hello, guys, please. <laughs> that weird dude over there, no. But on, in general, I think this, the set was quite a nice atmosphere. Um, and uh, Sheridan, I think, led the way in terms of laughing and, 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 and making jokes. She was always doing something wildly uh, inappropriate whenever I, I walked <laughs> but on You're going to have to elaborate, but you can't yeah. start like that and not finish <laughs> the, it. The thing is, on, on, on a film set, you, uh, people are working ridiculous hours. We, everybody, for actors, it's the easiest because we might be on for four or five hours, six hours. If you're the star, if you're like a number one like Sheridan or like Jade, you might be there for, you know, you might be doing work in seven to seven, which is still, that's very long, but there's crew that are starting at like three, four in the morning and finishing way after 7 p.m. So the hours are nuts. So you get a little bit, you go through these phases. Sometimes you're sort of stir crazy. Other times, because you have like three hours of sleep and 21 hours with these other people, it's a bit like camp. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So everybody's sort of in it together and you just, you pump yourself full of sugar and you just muck about, you know, you try and have as much fun as possible because above everything, the glamour, the stars, the, the ratings, the audience response, above all of that, filmmaking's super boring, man. Like, it's so boring. <laughs> so you've got that. to he's, have fun. He's found a, a tiny layer under star status, sort of going to events, <laughs> premieres, a tiny little bit, yeah, slightly boring. We would all like to do what you do, Jussie, mate. I I'll tell you one that. thing. There's, there's, a, there's a scene, I can't tell you too much about it, and I think it's Ep 5, um, where there's a lot of, I'll just say, outdoor physical action involving myself <laughs> and Sheridan, right? And um, shooting outdoors with someone of her star quality is not straightforward because obviously people recognize her and they freak out. Yeah. And on this particular day, th I just don't think it gives too much away to say there's a chase going on. No. Can I say that? Yeah. There's a chase going on. have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? I want to give a spoiler, but here's well, the spoiler. What made it funny is there's Sheridan running and there's me running, and there's the paparazzi running as well, everywhere we went. This is like Sheridan, me, paparazzi. Try, trying to ambush her, you know? That was, that, was, that was a particularly crazy day. But um, yeah, we had a lot of fun in general, I'd say. We, we hung out quite a bit, and we actually hang out in real life as well. We are actually mates. We knew each other we're, before. We're, we're more mates off camera than we are on camera, to be honest. Oh, so lovely. We besties. It was, yeah, actually besties. Really, it was actually really nice. We, we bumped into each other at the audition, yeah. both, and then we both realised um, that we got, you know, we both got our... That's the best yeah. bump into when it comes to actors, at, like at an audition. Yeah. If you're a black woman <laughs> and you bump into a ginger man, <laughs> we're going for the that's a friendly bump into because you just think, I hope you get it, I hope you get it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Guaranteed you're not going for the same role. <laughs> I, I don't want you to leave the sofa, but I'm so sorry. That is all we have time for. Honestly, it's gone so, so fast. Now, cleaning up is on tonight. I will be at home with a cup of tea watching it at 9 p.m. Remember that, 9 p.m. Please put your hands together one last time for the writer and cast. The Vitamin's cleaning up.